He's here. Wait. He is. Yeah. Hi, you Hello? guys. Hello, can you hear us? Hi, I sure can. How are you? Um, good. Hey, Gerald. I'm going to have to get this. This is Gerald. Gerald. <laughs> How you doing, Gerald? Sorry. Trying to fix Good morning. Good morning. How are you? Not too bad at all. <laughs> good, good, good. Thank you for reaching out. How can I help you guys? Yeah, it's bright, bright and early here this morning, so... Uh, Yes, I, I, I saw that in the in the email in the Philippines, huh? <laughs> you guys are out there in the Philippines. Yes, yes, in Manila. So, wow. I actually grew up on Filipino food and I continue to eat Filipino food maybe twice a week. Oh right, okay. Uh, yeah, which uh what's the favorite? I have well I love it all. I love chicken adobo, I love ponset, I love lumpia. Oh. I mean, I, I, um, right here where I grew up my whole life, my parents, they still live there here in San Diego. We are um, okay. two minutes away from one of the most popular Filipino restaurants in all of San Diego. Oh, nice. Yeah, it's okay. called Tita's. So we go there, maybe I take my little boy, I have a 12 year old son and he just loves the barbecue chicken and, and we go there maybe two times a week and, and we just love it, man. We love it. And uh, I, I've yeah, never it's well, been to the Philippines, that's for sure. I've never been there. No, well, you'll need to make the trip one day. It's worth the trip, particularly yes. if you if you got a son. Yeah, there's a, although not at the moment, but uh, certainly, uh, I guess by 2021, the holidays here will be cheap. I imagine. <laughs> I hope so, man. I hope so. Thank you so, so much for reaching out. What are you guys working on? Um, just to give you a little bit of background, I. Uh, and the reason why we're even at this stage, uh, obviously coronavirus has, has affected lots of different businesses and, and mine no different. I've got an outsourcing company, but I haven't really sort of been doing a lot of work with the actual outsourcing company. I've got some people working on it and doing a couple of small, you know, good gigs, um, particularly one with an insurance company mm -hmm. uh, where we're doing some back office work. But for the last probably three years, I've had a couple of projects going. One was with some, and, and really for the last 20 years, you know, we've done, we've been sort of doing outsourcing a lot of the times to telcos, doing sales and customer service accounts. Mm -hmm. But mostly with people who, who knew us or whatever, you know, we've never been in a situation where we have really had to go out and chase work. It's just come our way. And for the last three years, I've worked on two separate projects. One was I built an advertising company, which was quite a company in Australia who had, who was putting TV screens in small supermarkets. Uh, and then we were selling advertising on those screens. So we we're mm -hmm. building sort of cheap videos and they were pretty cheap. They were just photo videos, not proper videos for them. And, um, and then running them on the on the uh, on the screen. So when people were standing at the counters getting served, they were watching video of local businesses and so on, which was going oh, very wow. well. But the problem was, and I was the face. My company, which was Ad Smart Media, became the face of the sales because I was the sales arm, customer service, and billing. They were just the infrastructure. Mm -hmm. But the problem was the infrastructure failed. So their videos weren't getting streamed all the time and it became mm -hmm. a customer service nightmare. So mm -hmm. in the end, rather than me sort of copying uh, the flack for something I had no control over, I ended up just pulling the pin on it. So, uh, which it was going good. Yeah, you know, if the infrastructure held up, it would be a brilliant business. You know, there's trailing commissions. People were paying anywhere from 40 to to $100 a week mm. constantly for this advertising. So in theory, it was wonderful. In practice, it didn't work out. Not for everyone, but I couldn't mm -hmm. take the risk that, you know, the, for the few that were getting, you know, I was giving away video, free video um, all the time, you know, to get some customers and so on. So um, that, then I started in a project in um, uh, Five Star Hotels, so doing loyalty programs. So again, built that up over the last year and a half. And again, that, that was a good money spinner uh, and, and something that we could grow on a worldwide stage, but that industry is now dead. And it's going to be dead. Uh, it started dying about 
four weeks out from any shutdowns. Coronavirus was starting to hit the rest of the world. People were getting nervous. They stopped buying and mm -hmm. spending any money on tourism type uh, products. So that we saw the writing on the wall coming and, and now it's just completely dead. And that'll be it. If ever, you know, if ever it gets going or if ever we decide to get into it again, that'll be a minimum a year from now or longer. Mm -hmm. So, the, so the, the reality is I'm going back to doing, to going back to my outsourcing company because I was in that business with some other partners. Mm -hmm. So I'm going back to my outsourcing company. We're just getting the website updated and, uh, and uh, looking now to grow that. So we started doing, and, and Janine here, she works in the travel industry as well. She works for a travel agent. So that, that's dead as well. So, so to sort of assist my business moving forward and to give her a job as well during these times. So we've, we've bought some courses and so on and, uh, and, and, uh, and trying to now get our name, the name of Outsourcing Alliance out there into the marketplace and, um, and try and win some business. So that we, we're just at the start of, of that process of actually putting our first ads out there. Awesome. Really, really good. Who, who's your ideal client? Um, anyone really, but any, any small to medium business who uh, can, you know, what can possibly outsource their back office work. So I'm looking for a bit, I mean, I've always done sales campaigns and customer service and, you know, mm -hmm. the back office and stuff like that is just easy stuff. And it's what we're doing for the insurance company. It's very, very easy to do. And it's consistent. And when they see the job that you do, and we do a very good job, they just don't know it because they don't know who I am. Mm -hmm. um, then, you know, they'll keep going, you know, so uh, we, we could be targeting insurance companies. That is yeah. one angle. Mm -hmm. uh, for the company that we're we're going for now, or or any small business for that matter. So then you have you have an insurance client now, or or you used yes, to an, an insurance client based in New Zealand. I I would leverage that, you know, depending if you want to stay in that industry, but that that would be a good leverage point. Um, and I always recommend staying within one industry, although you may want to try to be a jack, a jack of all trades and go after everyone. I would highly recommend going after one niche. So yeah. whether it's insurance or whether we, we pick another one, I would recommend one, one, because what you can do, especially from an online marketing um, strategy, you can just simply use that as your, as your, as your case study. You can leverage their success. You can leverage what you've done for them and you can show that via video and run ads on that to attract more insurance companies. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's being able to use the case study. It's being able to use their testimonial. It's being, it's being able to use that and, and just take one cookie cutter system and just multiply it, multiply it, multiply it through ads, attracting that type of business owner into your funnel. Like okay. I, I would do that. That's why when, when I started going after businesses, I started going after real estate agents back in 2016 and helping them with my, with, with social media marketing and, and Facebook advertising, but leveraging my background because I came from it. I came from real estate and mortgages. So I, I use that to this day as my, as my leverage when I'm communicating with them, when I'm, when I'm working with them and, and, and I'm able to, to use the same verbiage and terminology, it really helps me gain, get their business. And, and the fact that I can take one real estate agent, whether I create a funnel for them, whether I create different landing pages or whether I run different advertising campaigns, I can use that one and just duplicate it over and over and over and over and just keep going after different clients all in that same industry. And it just makes my job 10 times easier. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. whether it's so with insurance the, with or the videos, YouTube, what do you use? What do you do with your videos? So when you're saying you set up videos, how are you doing that? As far as like to attract more clients or yeah. like whatever I do for the client. So for example, whatever you're doing for them, I would turn that into a simple test or I would turn that into a simple tutorial video. So for example, if I run a, if I set up a Facebook ad for, for a real estate agent, whether let's say we're, we're selling a house, they have a listing and we want to run a Facebook ad to sell the house. I'll record myself 
setting up the ad, I'll record looking at the back end of the ads manager and looking at the analytics and saying, hey guys, look what I was able to do for this client. This was a real estate agent out in Texas and we were able to get her you know, 15 leads at a dollar a piece and this is how I set up the ad. If you, want to show, if you want me to teach you how to do the same thing, click the button below. It'll take you straight to my page where you can enter your basic information and schedule a call and I can't wait to talk to you because I truly believe these same results anybody could be doing. Talk to yeah. you soon. Like simple random videos on your cell phone, even here that you guys are right now on your computer, simple video like this. Hey guys, this is Gerald. Just want to show you what we did for this other insurance agent. We were able to really outsource and help them with their customer service, help them with this, help them with that. Let me show you how we did it. And those are simple videos that you can, one minute, two minute videos that you can then run Facebook ads on and get them to this page. Yeah. So I would, I would leverage Facebook advertising. I would leverage video and I would, I would, I would do tutorials. So rather than some hypey commercial type of video, I would, I would, I, yeah, in, in many cases you would probably, with the strategy I'm talking about, your face would still probably be the brand. And I don't know if you want that, but, 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 mm -hmm. but at the same time, I truly believe it wouldn't hurt. It can only, it can only build your business. Like if you just remain that person or, or have another person, you know, do the tutorial video, but nothing crazy professional, the more raw and uncut you can make it, the better. And, and that's why I truly believe my, my YouTube channel has really brought me a lot of people, brought me a lot of business because my YouTube channel, the videos are very basic. They're tutorial. There's nothing fancy about them. I'm screen sharing. I'm teaching people, right? There's nothing salesy about it. Yep. And, and, and that, that's social media. And that's, that's marketing in today's Facebook advertising platform. It, it, it's as raw and as uncut as possible. And, and I truly believe most people miss that. Most people try to make it too perfect. They try to get the perfect image, the perfect video, the perfect backdrop. Everything has to be perfect when it doesn't. Number yeah, one, probably, it doesn't. And number two, it slows I, people down. Yeah, I can probably get the, uh, the, my contact person at, at the insurance company to do some sort of testimonial or video as well. A quick testimonial and say, hey, John, you mind just a, a, you know, a 60 second clip of what we were able to do for you? Would you mind just sending me a quick video like that? Because what I want to do is I'm really building my business. I'm looking for more clients and I want to use you as a testimonial. Would you mind just maybe doing something? And if anything, I'll throw in a free service or even I'll you know, send you 50 bucks or whatever it may be. You know, mm -hmm. I, I, in times like this, you know, I, I really want to build my business and I'm reaching out to you because I know we've done a good job. I know you guys are happy with us and I really want to keep you around long term, but I want to use this success as a blueprint to go help me build my business and find more clients. Would you mind a 30 second video just showing me how much, you know, we, our business has changed yours? Yeah, the, uh, it's an interesting situation with these people over there because again, I came as a referral the girl who's a senior manager in the in that particular insurance company, um, I, I had actually employed her husband many years ago as a GM here when I first came here nine years ago. Um, he again, he long gone and back in New Zealand now, and they've just got married. And funnily enough, they've just she's just had a child, so she's not working right now. Um, but they have because he's been in the outsourcing business and he knows me and what I do. Mm -hmm. That's how the work came my way anyway. And, and uh, likewise with the, with the, the hotel work, cause that was who he was working for previously. So he recommended mm -hmm. me again. So this is the second sort of time outside of employing him that the work has come my way because of it. Now, the third part to this story is they want to do business with you. She's, she's been in the insurance and finance game over there in New Zealand for quite some time and has a lot of contacts. So, we're, we're, we're going to be setting up some uh, a contract, a deal of some kind, particularly for the New Zealand market anyway, where, where they will try and attract com companies over to us and then we do a p and L. you know, we go a 50-50 on a p and L with them. So that's the sort of deal that we're looking at at the moment. So I guess mm -hmm. this angle is, is, uh, is ideal for those types of customers. And, and every, whether, whether it's a testimonial from them or not, the main 99% of the content that you can 
that you could possibly create for your Facebook advertising. Cause that's really all it's about. It's about, it's about an ad. What can we put out for an ad to get people to this page? That's, that's all that matters is how do we get people to this page? And I'm, I'm saying that it, that it has to be an ad. It's either going to be a Facebook ad, an Instagram ad, a, a LinkedIn ad, a YouTube ad. I would suggest maybe start with Facebook first, yeah. um, learn that ad platform and then move on to other ones. Um, but my point is, is the fact that 99% of your content can be very simple video where all you're doing is explaining what you did for the insurance company. Mm. So, so it's, it's, it's now proof. It's not, it's not, it's not theory. It's not what we want to do for you. It's not a pitch. Hey guys, let me just show you what we've been able to do for this company because all you're targeting are insurance agents anyways. So the majority of the people that are seeing your ad, they're not random people on social media who are not in the in industry. They are people that we're specifically targeting. So we're, tar we're, we're talking their verbiage and, and, and we're relating to them and we're showing them another client. It's a case study. So I'm just yeah. showing you different parts of, of what we've done for this specific company. And if you want us to do the same thing for yours, click the button below. It will take you straight to our page where you can download your free guide that will walk you through the ins and outs of what exactly we can do for you. Click learn more. I'll see you on the next page. So Simple with, with, videos with, like that, Gerald. Yeah. As the, as, so you're saying the video should be the frontline video. I, I mean, I don't, have you been through our Facebook stuff yet? The, the links of what we've actually started doing? I, I've seen all this and, and this is, this is good stuff. I mean, it, it, it is good, but, but the moment I see this, it's an ad. It is so, an ad. Correct. Yes. Yeah. You know, it's, it's an ad and that's fine. Ad advertising is advertising, but at the same time, advertising on social media is a little different in my professional opinion, where simple raw video if you don't want to do video, that's fine. Then, 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 then we need to for sure pivot to image. But if video is somewhat a possibility, that's what I'm saying you should be doing. It's simple video of, of, of you walking us through a, a tutorial or a case study of what you've done for another company. So, that's what so I would okay. So, and the interesting thing about this here is that page one that you, you, you've got up there, and we were just been, we've literally rolled this out for the first time. So we've only been playing with it for the last handful of days. Mm -hmm. um, and, but we have got in those handful of days, we have got 15 people to go to our landing page. They're just not filling out. Only one person filled out the details and, and then nobody set up a call, which I don't expect that to happen a lot. Um, but the fact that 15 people have actually looked at it and gone to the landing page is, I guess, uh, an indication that there is a need out there. You know, they wouldn't be doing it if they, although what, I'm, what we're saying there is pretty obvious, times are tough, you know. So um, I'm just trying to understand if 15 people, if we were to get 15 leads, that's a lot for this industry, you know, because, you know, one customer could bring you 10 people, you know, that, that's, you don't need to get a lot of customers in outsourcing to, to, mm -hmm. to get a lot of uh, a lot of good business, you don't know who could be looking at it, and just whatever size they might be, you know. Yeah. Some cust some customers can bring a hundred people on board, you know, which is huge. So here here's the million dollar question. So what we kind of covered first is is just strategy, ideas of of advertising, of uh, ideas of ads. I'm just I'm just convinced that video out out does everything, obviously. I'm just convinced that showing proof of what you did for a previous company that outdoes everything as well. So, so th that's what we kind of cover. That's kind of my two cents. That's what I would recommend from my personal, uh, you know, professional opinion, video and case studies of what you've done for other companies that right there would make a lot of people click. So that's number one. And then number two is the million dollar question is which objective here are you running traffic yeah, traffic? traffic yeah okay so this is where the call is going to be worth a million dollars for you guys this is going to be worth your time it's not traffic the objective oh, okay. you're going for is conversions 
conversion. That right there just completely made your year. It's conversions. Now there's a setup process in order to, to really make that successful. Um, you have to set up your custom audiences and you have to set up your custom conversion. So, How do we do that? <laughs> so okay, so that that's where we need to we need to really set some time because that's going to be like more of a that'll be more of an hour call. Okay. Because you have the pixels on your pages, right? Yes. Yeah. So the pixels. In fact, I could just I could just give you a shortcut, and 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 you guys, um, I know you guys can definitely figure it out. Here, yeah. Here's here's how you here's how you have to set up the 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 conversion. Custom audiences are one thing. And, and, and there's, there's mainly three custom audiences, just when it comes to the basics, there's three custom audiences that you want to set up. So number one is this landing page. Mm -hmm. And that's how, you know, you can, you can look, you can, you can figure out, okay, 15 people landed here. Those 15 people should be in a custom audience. Mm -hmm. Okay. So if, if, if you have a custom audience set up, it's around this page, that's one audience. There's going to be three audiences that I'm going to share with you. One audience are the folks who land here. Because mm -hmm. those 15 people, they did not fill out the form. They're in a custom audience, which we're going to leverage and retarget with ad number two. Oh. Because just, just as Gerald said, yes, there was an interest. Why would they click learn more if there was no interest? Mm -hmm. The ad was obviously somewhat appealing where they actually click learn more. They came over the page, but for whatever reason, they didn't fill it out. But there mm -hmm. was an interest there. I need to know that audience. And now I'm not going to know name and phone number. You know, it's not a lead. Facebook's not going to give me their information like that. But, mm -hmm. but with your custom audience, Facebook is going to start uh, curating this data of people who are actually landing on certain pages. And you're going to be able to leverage that to run future ads to. So okay. custom audience number one are the people who land on this page. Custom okay. audience number two are the people let me just um, fill this out. And this is just a dummy, a yeah. dummy lead, but you'll see this come through. Mm -hmm. Custom audience number two are the people who land on this page. Okay, so this is custom audience number two, people who land on the thank you page. Okay. And the reason why that's so important is because we got to be able to segment these people. We have to be able to, and, and, and we're going to be able to, to, to use that to our advantage when we go run future ads. So if you're running ads like this and you keep running ads like this, you want to be able to exclude the people who already opted in. Okay. Because I don't want to keep showing them future ads if they've already opted in. Mm -hmm. And I can only know that if I bucket, if, 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 if I put everything, everyone in a bucket, which is what Facebook calls a custom audience. So mm -hmm. as I go and set up my next ad, I can exclude these people from seeing any other ads. Mm -hmm. And that's super important because if you keep hitting the same people with the same ad and they've already opted in, number one, they're going to be pissed off. Number mm -hmm. two, they're going to, they're going to, they're going to complain to Facebook. And number three, you're going to be paying way more cost per lead because you're, you're advertising to everyone still when you don't need to be advertising to everyone still. Yeah. You need to be advertising to only those who have not landed here. Yeah. So, so that's custom audience number two, the people who land here. And then custom audience number three are the people who land on your thank you for scheduling page. So as a person comes here, and they enter their, their, their best time and they click the green one and they come over here and they fill out this information. There's that information. Let's just put in um, six, seven, 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 six, four. Okay. So let's put that in book your free call as a person books that call and they come to this success page. This is your third custom audience. And again, oh. I don't want to keep running ads to these people because they've these already booked people. appointments. So I don't, need it. I don't need them to keep seeing future ads, right? So, so now I'm going to create a custom audience and I'm going to exclude them from ever seeing another ad. Okay. Super important. Super, super important. Okay. So now those are three custom audiences. Landing page, thank you page, and success page. Okay. Those are your three custom audiences. 
Now let's go back to, I'm going to opt in one more time. This is where the magic happens. The magic is on. And, 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 and in fact, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to ask you the question. I'm going to ask you a question. Facebook, they, the way, the way, the way the, the objectives work. Okay. Over here, we choose objective. We choose which one, which one we want. You went with traffic because you're, thinking and, and it's and it's it's the most logical way to think you're thinking that you want to get people to this page yes. right that's a traffic campaign a traffic campaign is is to get people here which is your goal mm. that is your goal right your goal is to get them here the question i have for you and the question facebook has for you is what is your ultimate goal conversion that's right to what Conversions of COVID, obviously, yeah, they, we, we want them signing up. Are, exactly. And the only way that they can ever sign up is if they land on this page. Yeah. So Facebook, they don't want to know your goal. Your goal is to get, to get them to the landing page. What is your ultimate goal? Your ultimate goal is to get them to the thank you page. Yep. So I need to tell Facebook about this page. Now I told him about this page in a custom audience, but I also need to tell him about it in a custom conversion. So this link up here, what you're going to do is you're going to grab everything other than the HTTPS. You don't need, uh -oh. you don't need the HTTPS semicolon forward slash forward slash. You grab everything after that. Okay. So mm -hmm. this is, Number one, this is the golden goose. This is where all the magic happens. This is where your money's at. It's setting up a custom conversion. This is going to make those 15 people be 15 leads. Okay. Here's what we're going to do. This up here, we're going to copy this and we're going to come into our ads manager. We're going to click on the three lines. So, so again, to do the audiences, you click on the three lines, you come down to audiences Okay. And you take the, the link of each one. So I was going to show you custom conversions, but let me just back up and show you the custom audiences. Um, the three custom audiences. So all you're going to do is take the link. This is the custom audience for the thank you page. The yeah. other one so the, is the custom is, audience for each page. Yeah. yeah, for each page. So that's, those are the three custom audiences, but let me just show you how to set it up just in case. And then we'll set up a custom conversion. So in, when you click on, 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 on the, um, the events manager and you click on, or actually, no, when you just hit the three lines and you click on audiences, it's going to bring you here. And all you're going to do is click on create audience and custom audience. And if you can't find that anywhere by clicking around, just go to the actual um, um, search bar. So as you're in your ads manager, let me go back to the, to the beginning. As you're in the ads manager, you can simply type it in. You could just type in up here, search business. You could just type in custom okay. audience, okay. custom audience, and it'll bring you to the custom audience. Yep. Okay. And then you'll see it over here to the right. And then you could just, you could just uh, type, you could just custom audiences from a custom list website custom audiences you can click on that and then you can get to there by simply searching but mm -hmm. the way i did it is i simply i simply just hit the three lines in the top left and i clicked on audiences okay. so let me just let me just do it again you know that bit? yeah so up here the three lines i'm going to click on that i'm going to come down and i'm going to look for audiences so I'm going to click on audiences. Mm -hmm. So th this right here is, is, is step one is making sure your pixel is on all the pages. That's step one. And then mm -hmm. step two is simply setting up these custom audiences. So as I'm in here now, all I'm going to do is click on the blue dot or the blue button, custom audiences. And this is the thank you page right here. So you want one for the landing page, you want one for the thank you page and the thank you for scheduling page. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to copy that. I'm going to bring it over here and it's going to be website. So website is where I'll be. Mm -hmm. Click on website and I'm going to click on all website visitors. I'm going to go down to people who visited specific web pages. Okay. 
and I'm going to simply paste in that URL. Right. And I'm going to name it. Yeah. And I'm recording this, by the way, Gerald. So you don't. Oh, have you to are. Really... Okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll send you the recording. <laughs> I'll send you the recording. Frantically writing. So. <laughs> yes. No. No worries. No worries. <laughs> we'll name the audience, and this is going to be very specific. Specific. It's going to be very obvious. Who Who is this audience? This audience are leads. These are people who visit the thank you page. Mm -hmm. So, so I would name the audience. You know. Um, um, it, well, this is thank you for your interest, but I would, if I was doing it, if I was doing an audience for that, it would simply be scheduled appointments. Oh. That's the audience because those are people who landed on, actually, this is the thank you for this. That's the thank you. That's, that's the thank you page. So they, they opted in and then they're here. So what I would do on the audience is I would name it leads. That's what it is. Those are people who landed on the thank you page. Those are leads. So that would be my audience. I would name that leads and and then i would be a little bit more specific of course like if you have other projects going on you know try to make that as specific as possible as far as what type of lead that was but that's what you would do name the audience contains um uh put that lit put that that url in create audience and now i have a custom audience and that's right there leads now again mm -hmm. why is that important because i want to be able to when i go set up the ad ad number two let's say when I go set up ad number two, ad number three, ad number four, ad number five, I want to exclude those people. They yeah. don't need to see any more ads. Okay. They're already a lead. Yeah. So, and, 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 and let me, let me also say this. If there was an ad that I actually want to run to my leads, well, there it is there. Now I can include that audience and run an ad to maybe only them. I can do an ad. I can do a video. Hey guys, this is David. I know you guys opted in a couple of weeks ago. Hey, thank you so much. Guess what? We have some other services that you guys may want to look into, right? And I can do a simple ad and target those specific people because that's an audience that I created. And those are all people who landed on this page. Okay. So they sit, just sit in your custom audience. File, they just sit on my basically. custom audience. That audience keeps accumulating keeps acute. The more ads I'm running, the more leads I'm gathering. Facebook is going to keep increasing mm -hmm. this, 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 this quantity. So that just sits in. So, so to ever find them in the future, they're just sitting in a file basically. Yes. People. They're they're Now you're not going to, it's not leads. So you're not actually in this case, it's just audience. So you're not going to see name and phone number. Yeah. You're going to see name and phone number and email in your Karcher account. You're not going to see it here. Um, now, once you set up the custom conversion, then you can see the lead count. You'll start to see, okay, we spent 50 bucks and we got 37 leads. You'll be able to see the quantity, but you're not going to see name and number. Name and number is inside your CRM. Name and number is inside your car trip. Okay. okay. But this Facebook is just simply populating that data because of the pixel. It's the Facebook pixel that is tracking all this. So when you say name and number inside Kartra, what, what are we saying there? Well, when they go to your landing page, whatever information you're asking for on the landing page. Oh, okay. So the information that they send to us. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 So when, when they, they come fill over in here, the form. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. They fill out the name. Okay. So you're asking for name, last name, company name, yeah. email. That's what you're going to see inside of Kartra. You're not going to see that yeah, inside of Facebook. Correct. Yeah. Okay. Yes. okay. So that's right. So there's no way of ever knowing that there's no software that can bring down the, those details. No, because that's, that's now you're dipping into privacy policy. And these are people that did not give up. Your, so, yeah. They didn't give up their information to begin with. So Facebook has that information internally. Yeah. They're not going to share that, but nor do I need them to share that. These are people no. that, that I already have the name and number, right? They're in my CRM, but, but I'm able to leverage that data to show future ads to, or to not show future ads to. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So three audiences leads, people who land on the landing page and people who land on the thank you for scheduling page. Yeah. Those are your three audiences. That's how you're going to set it up over here. Now, the last one you, we need is custom conversion. We need to set up a custom conversion and here's how, here's how we're going to do it. We're going to simply click on the three lines or again, in the top, you can type in mm -hmm. and search custom conversions, but in this case, I click on the three lines and I'm going to events manager. Okay. And the events manager is going to take me to custom conversions where I'm going to simply click right here, 
custom conversions. And all I'm going to do is get the URL. I'm going to get the link for the thank you page. Remember, here is the actual landing page. Facebook wants to know what the thank you page is. That's our custom conversion. That's our custom audience and it's our custom conversion. Two different things, but both of them are just as equally as important. So for this case of running an ad, we're gonna run a conversions ad. We wanna capture leads. We need to tell Facebook, this is the page we want to get people to. So we copy that. We come over here to custom conversions. We create custom conversion. And it's gonna be the same thing. All we're gonna do is simply come over here, contains, we paste in that URL, we give it a name, we can name them um, um, whatever your campaign may be, outsourcing. It could be outsourcing um, thank you page. And then the category would be lead. And if we get kicked off, you guys just log back on. We click on lead, we click on create, and there is our custom conversion. It's right there. Now we X out of that. Now, as we come over here, we come and set up the ads manager. You're gonna, the objective is now conversions and you're gonna choose that in the ad set. You're gonna choose, you'll see it in the drop down. You're gonna choose that conversion. Okay. Okay. So again, we may be cut off here in a few seconds, but if we get cut off, just log back on. But all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on create. Now I can go set up an ad. I'm gonna click on create. I'm gonna click on conversions. 